honestly, it's the hallway track. Like the biggest, the spaces where I've learned the most at CPPCon have been in the evenings, hanging out with people over a drink or at dinner and just chatting. Hi, I'm uh, Scott Dixon. I uh, build flying robots with Prime Air, and I'm here today to talk to you about my love of really bad alligators. Uh, so in um, safety critical systems, uh, dynamic memory is often proscribed uh, for reasons that you probably haven't thought deeply about, and shame on you. Um, we uh, thought, thought a lot about it, and one of the things we noticed is uh, C++17's PMR has a really uh, a, a set of design patterns that are really compelling and useful uh, in the, the in firmware for solving some of these problems. So to understand what they are, um, let's first talk about the dynamic, dynamic memory. Uh, a lot of fir firmwares will uh, allocate memory once on startup and never deallocate it, but from a functional safety standpoint, that's not very interesting. When it becomes interesting is if you delete and then reallocate memory, and you, and you do that constantly. Um, this adds two new properties to your uh, software that now have to be verified. First is time. So what used to be a constant time uh, allocation now takes some amount of time. Um, you know, a good, um, uh, a good max heap al algorithm may be running in, in linear time, um, to which you say, you know, lin linear time, that sounds pretty good to me, right? While well, you're four meters away from uh, 1,000 pounds of titanium spinning at uh, 4,000 RPMs, outputting 1,700-degree gases at 800 kilometers an hour. 12,000 meters above the earth. Okay, so I, I, as lightning talk, I'm gonna propose something uh, 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 for a model here. I, I'm pretty sure Rolls-Royce is not actively allocating and deallocating memory while their fuel pump is operating. Let's say we have a fuel pump, okay? And the fuel pump is, is allocating and deallocating memory. Um, so uh, one of the things, um, we, we just talked about the, the, the runtime. Um, well, a um, collaborator uh, of mine on the OpenCypher project um, has released a O1 heap allocator that he describes as predictably bad. And uh, it is bad in it's really memory inefficient. It uses a lot, but it is um, it does run in constant time. Okay, so let's say we can solve the, the time problem. What's the other property we have to test for? Uh, the other property uh, that we have to, to test for, um, what happens if you run out of memory? Now, this is a a big area, so let's just focus on one scenario. So let's say we have another function in this firmware. Um, we're gonna have telemetry they're putting on a data bus in, 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 the, uh, in the vehicle, and let's say that it also is allocating memory. So how do we, um, uh, what's the, uh, the, the uh, next slide. Uh, <laughs> this brings up the term uh, partitioning. Um, so this is from uh, DL 178, which is kind of the, the Bible of civil aviation software certification, and you'll see a lot of verbiage in there uh, about partitioning software functions in uh, time on your CPU and in space, in memory. Okay, so how do we partition these two functions? Well, one thing we can do is we can have two uh, separate heaps, two really bad allocators. Okay, but we haven't actually partitioned everything. This is good, um, but we're still sharing the same RAM banks. Uh, we're still sharing the same memory bus. How do we really partition this? Well, um, I could uh, put the fuel pump into a section of memory dedicated, uh, uh, TCM memory, and then let's say that my output peripheral has a DMA, I can implement a zero copy driver, and now I've got these two memory resources. <coughs> memory resources, there, sorry. Um, so uh, we makes a perfect abstraction, right? Let's swizzle this around uh, into an object view. So we've got um, now our two memory resources, um, two implementations of the memory resources, uh, and then two regions of memory. Um, we'll draw a line down the middle there and we'll label it and <laughs> this FAA is really gonna love this. This is a nice picture. I can toss this in, the polymorphic allocator, and now I've uh, enabled all PMR aware types in the standard library. And um, I believe I actually have implemented string backed by DMA. That was pretty easy. Uh, I, I'd love to talk about the testing story here. It's a great testing story, but um, my time is up. So I am uh, just gonna leave you with, uh, I really love PMR. I think it's well-designed. 
and to the point that if anybody adds anything to my firmware in the future that doesn't use PMR, this is what's going to happen if they try to compile it. So thank you so much. Love PMR. <laughs>